to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We're right next to the St. Damien and St. Marianne Museum, or what's going to be the museum. They're pouring the concrete in the morning for the foundation, so it's been exciting. But also you might hear some noise just outside my window because I'm basically exactly above the altar of the Catholic Church there. You know, there's there's a uh, something about surfing that keeps you humble. I remember about a year ago at this time, there was a surf contest going on in Waikiki, and it was really big. When there's a, there's a surf spot here called Kunas on the south shore, you surfers know what I'm talking about, and it only breaks when it's big. And so the break in front of my house, Queens, was taken up by the contest, so I paddled way, way out uh, and caught a bomber of a wave at Kunas. I mean, I don't know, way over, maybe it wasn't that big, maybe 17 feet, but oh my gosh, a beautiful long ride, and I'm going, man, I bet you all those people on the beach think I'm like a god. I'm surfing this wave so good. <laughs> and I did. I surfed it all the way through. I could have cut right through the contest zone on that wave. It just kept on rolling. But I didn't. I kind of bailed out. I had to stop because I didn't want to interfere with the contest. And then, okay, I'll just get a little wave here on the inside. Uh, and I took that wave right through the boneyards, catapulted myself. <laughs> uh, I would say it was more like a cartwheel than a wipeout. And so pride, you know, comes before the fall, and we all need to learn to, to get humble. There's a saying in Hawaii at the contests, all the different people that are participating, there's different, there's all different types of events. One of them is the Hai Maka Maka, or the Yo Somebody contest. So, like, if you're helping sponsor the event, or you own a company, or you're Hai Maka Maka, then you get to go and be the man and go out and surf in a contest just for your, just for your category of Hai Maka Maka, Yo Somebody. But... In Hawaii, there's a saying called aka aka. And what it means is to present yourself in every situation humbly. Not be high maka maka. Not be so high up. You know, in, in the ninjutsu art, we talk about, uh, the, the ninja art, I'm a second degree black, but we talk about the different sort of modes of the martial art. There's the fire mode, the earth mode, the wind mode. Different modes. The fire mode is way up in your chest when you're all puffed up like a rooster thinking you're tough. Uh, where I would rather be grounded in earth mode, which is more of the mode of a ruler who's just anchored in the earth and, and solid. We need to humble ourselves. We need to be aka aka. When it comes to situations that confuse us, slow down, uh, humble yourself, and ask for God's guidance. And it, usually the safe route is to do the opposite of what you're inclined to do. And the safe route is to, is to, to be humble instead of prideful and just let the Lord kind of guide let the Lord kind of steer the canoe. I remember once uh, someone I know was out in their outrigger canoe here. I love surfing my OC1. And, uh, and uh, uh, but it, it kind of, my, my OC1, my one man outrigger canoe, one man kind of eventually had to have a burial at sea because I worked it so hard through the surf. But I had a friend who, who said, why doesn't anybody get their OC1? Why doesn't anybody paddle canoe over there? He went over and got a big wave and then he found out because as he's dropping in, it wasn't that big, but maybe an eight foot wave. As he's dropping in, he sees there's nothing but coral as the as the waves sucked up the, the water off the reef, and he got aka aka right. We got aka aka on the on the ah uh-uh. the ah uh-uh is a type of, of of lava flow that's very sharp. So he got aka aka on the ah uh-uh. ah. So let's uh, let's uh, let's get humble. Uh, but we have someone with us today that can tell us a thing or two about uh, being in an outrigger t- canoe. We have John and Bonnie Keenan and their awesome son. Timothy, aloha, you guys. Aloha from Idaho. Aloha. aloha. So if you guys could just see them, uh, which you can, if you go to our YouTube screen, you can you can watch this show with the John and Timothy Keen, and you can watch it. You can see them all here. So I want to hear, Timothy, did you have a good time on the Outrigger Canoe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what you at first you were a little bit nervous. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Uh... You got in. Got in. <laughs> Did you enjoy it, Tim? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Did you? Mm-hmm. 
And we, what was the feeling? What did you feel like when we were paddling out away further and further from the beach? Mm. Were you a little frightened? Yeah, a little frightened. <laughs> and what did you feel when we we turned around and caught the wave? Dropping in. <laughs> Dropping in. Yeah, cool. did you li- did you like the the feeling of the speed of the outrigger canoe? Speed of our canoe. Yeah, and did did you like it when we uh, almost ran over people? <laughs> <laughs> going fast. Did you like going fast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Tim- Timothy uh, really meant a lot to us in that canoe because we could feel when he started paddling, the canoe started moving. So uh, we're just so glad to have Timothy with us. Hey, man, I called you on FaceTime last week. You didn't pick up. Mm. <laughs> You remember that, Tim? No, no, I don't. Okay, well, maybe what we'll do is text you or text your text your dad or something, and we'll get we'll. So when we Facetime you, we love we love that we love you, Tim. We just you. we miss you, man. We miss you in Hawaii. Did you bring some of that aloha back with you? Yeah. Did you Did you like Hawaii? Did you bring Hawaii with you, Tim? Yeah, very well. Oh, good. A little we, bird. Yeah, we got to have you come back. Well, we're talking with the Keenan family. We have John and Bonnie and their their wonderful son, Timothy, who we just oh, love that guy. He's, uh, he's such a courageous man and, and so full of love and aloha, as we say here in Hawaii. Uh, so, um, John, I want to ask you, I see in the, on, the, on the YouTube version of this, your library, what are your favorite books over there that we're looking at behind, beside, behind Timothy? Well, I, I, I have quite a collection of Bibles, and I've got one of my favorite Resources is an 1889 four volume edition of Lives of the Saints. You don't see that on my screen, but it's to my left, and it's just been a rich resource I use in in with the Dominican chapters. So that's amazing. a four volume set, you know, because I'm going to be starting a new series with uh, with the EWTN Morning Show. You know, on Monday mornings, I, I I spend ten minutes with them at at one in the morning Hawaii time, but I'm going to wow. do a whole new series on the Saints, John, starting you know the Ooh. Colonnade where the uh, uh, St. Peter's Basilica, how the arms just yes. reach out to embrace you. Absolutely. It goes through, I'm going to go through all 140 of those saints one well, week at a time. Amazing. Well, you know, Bear, because this is an 1889 version of that Lives of the Saints, and which was published first in 1853, and it's all Butler's Lives of the Saints, and it's in his original writing and language. Maybe I need to ship these to you so you can well, access that. Well, uh, well who, 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 uh, who wrote it? Butler. Uh, Alban Butler, Reverend Alban Butler, and it was, I bought these when I was in law school at a used bookstore for 15 bucks. They didn't have a clue what they, the way they had there. I bought them <laughs> at home and I couldn't, it was like opening up a, uh, a, a leaf of gold, you know, it was just incredible. Well, you love books like I do. You know, I, I, I'm so upset I can't remember the name of the bookstore in, um, uh, just, just outside of St. Paul down there on the river. I forget even the name of the little town down there, but I, I stumbled into this little bookstore. Aloha, Bonnie. Bonnie's leaving the house. I see her leaving the, the office. But I, I, I mean, I'm like you. I walked into this bookstore, and I thought, a used bookstore is special, you know? And I walked in there, and I'm like, wow, does he even know what he's got here? And uh, so Cindy bought me a book on the two-volume set on the primitive church. And then I was having, uh, uh, I was having some... Um, I had a chance to go back, and when I went back, I realized that it was a Catholic used bookstore. <laughs> I thought they just had this little religious section that I stumbled on, and I ended up getting the the whole uh, all the volume set on the commentary by the early church fathers. So I think it's a twenty four volume set, and yeah, I love those books. Aren't they wonderful? I mean, this vol this four volume set is is amazing. Uh, Butler's Lives of the Saints, and it's just full of insights into various issues. At that time, and and the faith, it's just full of commentary on the faith. Which one uh, stands out to you the most, other than Saint Dominic? <laughs> We're talking about that. <laughs> other than Saint Dominic, um, for me, Saint Anthony and Saint Thomas, all of the Thomases, you know, Aquinas, the Apostle, and of course Thomas More. He's my patron. So all of them. Oh, really? Are, yeah. And we In don't fact, know. My who... religious name is Thomas. Huh. And we don't know, uh, and then Thomas Akempis, who we really don't oh, know yeah. about his personal life, other than that, other than that he was a monk in that, in I guess the Scandinavian area. I think I'm not even sure. Yeah, he, and his book, uh, his imitation of Christ, was a, 
just penetrated everybody's hearts at the time it was written in the 1400s and of course succeeding to to today i listen to uh, a beautiful audiobooks version of it at night uh, when i go to sleep a guy has kind of a british accent it's just it's a free it's a free book but it's just so beautiful but you know that you know the sad thing is is that a lot of the books and that's the most published book uh, in the world other than the Bible, or was at one point. I, I have read that, and I think that continues to be true. Well, the thing is, it fits across the border, uh, board because Protestants and Catholics read it. The only sad thing is is that a lot of a lot of the Protestant versions take out the fourth book, which is all about the communion. I know. I know. That's what's amazing. It's sad. But some of my friends from law school, there were many Protestant. It was in there. They just didn't read it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking with John Keenan and Timothy Keenan. Uh, a couple of big ocean surfer outrig canoe paddlers. They came out here to Hawaii about three weeks ago, and we got them started on their ocean adventure. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasnick adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wasnick adventure. I want to re- remind you guys: this is a, it's thrilling. What's happening with Long Ride Home? EWTN is airing it again for probably over 20 times. They've they've aired season one, which is 10 episodes of men riding on bikes in love with Jesus. I mean, it's just what can get more gritty and more real than that than a pack of men crossing the United States and in search of a deeper conversion uh, to the Lord. And we, what's unique about Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak is that it's only the second show EW, EWTN has ever done that was picked up by the Armed Forces Network. But what's really cool, and we really need your, we really need you to uh, to help us out here, and 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 we're I think uh, providing a great benefit for you. If you go to iTunes or Amazon Prime Video or Google Play, you can buy all ten episodes and power watch it. Like right now, we're power watching uh, uh, Father Brown Mysteries, you know, inspired by G.K. Chesterton. You can you can power watch a long ride home with Bear Wozniak, uh, maybe over East or something when your friends or family are there. Sit down and watch the first couple episodes. There uh, on EW10, of course, you can DVR it. But if a lot of people they've only seen three of the ten episodes, and it's meant to be kind of watched in sequence. So go to uh, Amazon Prime Video or Google Play or um, iTunes. I think it's fifteen ninety nine for the whole season, and that helps support us so we can do our next show. We're uh, we're here today talking with John Keenan and Timothy Keenan. Who are who have become incredible watermen, John? What were the first words? One of the first, I think, within the first minute of us meeting each other when you came here three weeks ago, you said you said you'd rather be someplace else. Where was that? <laughs> I, I'd rather be on the ski hill in uh, Bogus Basin in Boise, Idaho, than necessarily in Hawaii. I'd never had been there before, and that, that was, was the first day. But at the end of your vacation, what did you say? Can I stay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Waikiki. I mean, I love the island. Uh, I can't go on enough. Yeah. Well, it you is. so so we went out with Timothy, uh, your son Timothy, who's here with us too. If you want to watch yeah. us on YouTube, uh, you can, you know, it, it goes out live over all the ETWTN channels, but you can also go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and watch these guys. But you, you, you guys went out in the outrigger canoe, and then you guys went out surfing. What was that surfing like for you? Oh, it was awesome. Um, Micah, who was the coach, yeah. And teacher took us out there. He's amazing. He's really good. I've already referred him to a friend and his wife that are going over there this week. And well, I want to meet him. Tell him to tell him to stop by and say hi to us. Oh, I will for sure. Um, my friend is is coming back to the faith. As a matter of fact, oh, I want to meet him. He is. He's a great guy. He's re, he's just retired from D.C. area and coming moving back home. But anyway, long story short, that time spent on the water with Micah and my wife Bonnie was amazing. He is an amazing teacher and really enjoyed the time. I actually got up twice, which is amazing. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so your so, life is ruined now. You're just a surf bum now. I, I would be. You know, Bear, I kept saying on the way home, if I was 20 years old, I would not be heading back to Idaho. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> but I spent my whole youth on skis, you know, and and but it the, the water out there is just amazing. It's There's such something a about it. The, the, the visibility of the water, you can see everything. Sometimes you see things you don't want to see down there too. But, but I mean, it's just like being in a swimming pool. And then the, I've, I've actually surfed waves, John, where the water was so clear, I couldn't see the wave. 
Oh my I God. literally couldn't see the water beneath me. All I could see was kind of a refraction of the reef below me. This it's is so, so beautiful. Yeah, it really is beautiful. You know, there's water in Idaho like that, the clear water here and all around, but there is nothing quite like being out there in the water far out, out at sea and how beautiful it is. And what's neat about it, there's not that many people out in the water. You know, well, uh, well let, let's say this. To, let's say, okay, that's a good point. Let's say this. So a lot of people are kind of on the outside looking into the Catholic faith too, and right. they're like, and they're like, you know, I'm, I, I would rather be uh, playing golf on a Sunday morning, or I'd rather be, uh, I'd rather do this or do that. I really don't need, I really don't need to be part of a, of, a, I don't need to be a Christian, or I don't need to be a part of a faith, a practicing Catholic. But once they paddle out, they're like, wow, I meant, what was I thinking? I was missing out. Yeah. And- it, it's I often that's a really good analogy. I often uh, analyze it and uh, analogize it like a wa- rock skipping across water and you see the different faiths, the perspectives of various faiths. And then you land and you dig deep into the Catholic faith and you go as you go deeper and deeper. You can't find enough love in it. Oh, it's my so gosh, good. that's perfect. You know, and uh, that's how I analyze. analyze I do, it. too. I think of it as paddling out. You know, once you get about two miles out, maybe three miles out here, wow. it drop it drops down a mile or two. Wow! So when you leave the shoreline, the Ina, the comfort of your of your uh, complacent life, and you paddle out into the deep with Jesus, in the Catholic faith, you're no longer in the shallow end of the pool. It gets deep really fast and really, really uh, broad too, as the ocean opens up in, in in its length and its breadth and its depth. That to me, that's the the, the wonder of the Catholic Church. That's the yeah. That is that is a very good analogy because what it begins is you begin to see as you dig deeper, you begin to see the beauty of Jesus Christ and what He means and in His church and all of that matters despite all the issues it's facing. It is so beautiful and wonderful to well get tell to us know. tell us about that. Tell us about your own personal journey uh, for a few moments to so get us caught up on how, how you got to where you are. Thank you, Bear. I just it you know I was born and raised Catholic. Um, and here in Boise, and went through Catholic school to the third grade. But it was when I was about 23, I had kind of my wild time in a fraternity in college, and I decided I needed to to deal with a life more realistically. And I remember falling on my knees in my apartment, asking the Lord to to help me get back to my faith as I knew it to be at the time. Um, a few years later, I was working in Washington, D.C. Uh, for a member of Congress from Idaho and went to the Dominican House of Studies in D.C. You may have been there in the past. and They I had wouldn't a- let me in, John. They would, they, would not, they would not let me nearby, probably. They got a picture <laughs> of me warning, don't let this guy in. Don't let him in. Anyway, I had a conversion experience there. Well, tell me what you mean by that. You went into the House of Study, uh, the Dominican House of Study, you called it? You're right. It's near the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception on Michigan Avenue near Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. And so I went to a colloquium there, which is just another word for conference. It's, and, for, it's for intellectuals to go to. <laughs> colloquial limb. Mm. My colloquial <laughs> limb. Uh, so it just means talking, really. And those, We call it talk story in Hawaii. <laughs> <pretty good. laughs> That's so easy anyway, after the colloquium. The colloquium, we, uh, I had one of the priests asked if I was, wanted to join the lay Dominicans, and I'm going, what's a lay Dominican? So from there, I started attending uh, meetings and fell in love with the order and more so with the Catholic Church. It's, it's like that analogy that you talk as you go out deeper and deeper. That's how I did, and, and that was the wonderful part about it. Well, so you, yeah. there at that, at the, at the, the Dominican House, House of, of Studies. Uh, yeah. but you, did you have a moment of conversion, or was it just you kind of felt drawn? Well, I've had a number of moments of conversion, and I'm sure you know how that is. But I was drawn into it, mm-hmm. and I do remember attending Mass at one of the chapter meetings we had in D.C. and going to confession and just having a very deep feeling of the Lord's presence not only in the confession, but post-confession going to Mass. And it was like, okay, I'm here to stay. It made so much sense to me, both spiritually and intellectually, to stay here. 
Well, that, so I stayed, stayed with them. That, what's interesting, you said both spiritually and intellectually. You know, when you go to confession, yeah. and, and so many people tell me it was when I went to confession that things got right. Well, when you go to confession, you're getting yourself right with God, also right. with the church. Right. Because when you sin, you sin against the whole church, and also with yourself. So that be, once you get right with yourself, there is this alignment of spiritual soul and body. Comes into yes. right relationship with each other and with God. And so you're ready to be, you're ready to go deeper with God because you've got everything's, it, it, every, you know, truth flows much easily through a channel like that that's all in alignment. It's just exactly what I was thinking, the truth, because the truth, of course, is the study of the Dominicans. But in confession, in reconciliation, all those things align. I love the way you said it because it brings out, realigns your head and your heart your spirit and your body into and towards God in that channel of, uh, of God in our lives. Yes, beautiful. Well, we're here talking with John Keenan, who's uh, one of the newest surfers in the world, and his son Timothy Keenan, who uh, went out big uh, in some good surf and paddled out rigged canoe and caught some waves. We had just a great time with both of them here in Hawaii. By the way, if you ever come to Hawaii, just go to my website and just or Facebook message me. And just oh, say, dude, sure. we're coming to Hawaii. We'd love to hook up with you. You know, anybody out there listening in, in EWTN Radio Land, we'd love to just, we'd love to bump into people and say hi, say hi to them on the beach. So if you're ever going to be coming to Waikiki, text me and see if we're here. We're here most of the um, over half the time in Waikiki now again. So we want to invite you guys to go to our website, uh, and you could go there and click on the email and say, hey, we're coming to Waikiki. Or you can go to Facebook. Don't go to the Bear Wozniak Facebook page and try to – Become my friend. Go to the Facebook page that says Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure Ministries, and then you can follow me. Because so many people want to be part of what we're doing, but they try to friend me, and then I've got too many friends, and then they can't do it. So go to deep, go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure Facebook page, and you can do that. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Life is an adventure. Right in that word adventure, it seems like there's a hidden word adversity. It's it's something about a challenge and and and, and having to grow to become the challenge, to overcome the challenge. Uh, like David said, lead me to the rock too high to climb, and I will climb it. By thee I can leap a wall, by thee I can crush a troop, by thee I can bend a bow of bronze. Let's take on challenges and adventures in our life that are too big for us to handle without growing in conversion, uh, growing in humility, and growing in the power and presence of God. Let's take on challenges that we can't accomplish without God. It's so fun to be a Christian. It's kind of like I always picture myself like if I was in a dark alley and some big bully gang was coming up to attack me, and I was going, okay, I guess I'm going to have to fight them. And then they all look at me, and they just get scared and run. And then I turn around and Jesus and a bunch of angels are standing behind me. You know, it's just kind of, kind of, you know, you plus God equals the majority. So, uh, so we want to, uh, we want to uh, live that kind of life of adventure. So we always say the the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And so I want to invite you guys, men, listen up. We have something so cool. No one else is doing this. We have something called Bears Man Cave. And you can, be a, you can be a member. You can go to uh, deepadventure.com, click on Bears Man Cave, and join. It's $10 a month to join. And then you not only help support the ministry, but you become a member of a secret Facebook group called Bears Man Cave. You cannot join by going to that on Facebook. you got to go through our website. And then there's uh, men there that are challenging each other with Scripture verses, uh, uh, equipping each other, encouraging each other, mobilizing each other, saying, dudes, like someone wrote yesterday, one of our members, hey, I'm going into a second surgery tomorrow. Please pray for me. Uh, so we're praying for Joshua and other and other members of our of our man kid. My daughter, uh, you know, just told me revealed this truth to me. We need to pray for her. Need to help her. So we're praying for each other. We equip each other. We mobilize every Saturday morning. I do a Bears man cave video. But what's really cool is about every two or three weeks we get together for a man cave meetup. We use a special technology called Zoom video chat rooms. And you'll see all the men get online and all their faces kind of pop up and populate the screen. And when someone is talking, suddenly their, their picture kind of gets bigger and we can see who's talking. And we've been, we've been, we just kind of talk story about what's going on in our lives. And then we go through my book, Deep Adventure of the Way of Heroic Virtue, as a means of kind of opening up discussion. But what's really cool is several of the men now 
have started their own local man cave group where they get together uh, maybe on a back deck smoking a cigar and having a shot of whiskey and uh, and going through my one of my books or, or some other program like uh, Man Up, I think, by Father Larry Richards, one of them is using. But all these men, all of a sudden, they find themselves because they're part of the man cave starting little men's groups or doing a retreat. They don't, they don't, they don't realize what's happening while they become part of the man cave. We help encourage and mobilize. And then the Holy Spirit says, hey, you got a minute? Got something I want you to do. So go go join Bears Man Cave. It's the coolest thing you can do. You're part of a fa- secret Facebook group. You contribute. You receive. And then we have the, voom, the Zoom video chats where we all get to look at each other's ugly mugs. It's really fun looking at a bunch of Neanderthals. You know, uh, you need a shot of whiskey and a cigar to handle that voom, Zoom video chat. Anyway, we're here with John Keenan and Timothy Keenan, uh, two of the newest uh, watermen. Timothy paddled out an outrigger canoe with me and rode some waves, and John and his wife Bonnie caught some waves surfing with us as well as outrigger canoe. So welcome back to the show, John. Thank you, Bear. Welcome back, Fantastic. Timothy. Aloha, Please Timothy. Thank you. Ah, aloha. So I want to ask you, what is it? Tell us, first of all, St. Dominic. Tell, tell us about the Dominicans and, the, and you know just a little bit about their, their heritage because you're a third order. Is that what it's called? Right, it's the third order of Saint Dominic, and I'm and I'm a I'm a, a third order basic and oblate in the Benedictines, so we're rivals. We'll have yeah, to play football. We'll play football against each other. Hey, we'll play football, but we're on the same team, right? All right, okay. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, uh, the Dominicans are, uh, you know, they we just celebrated 800th birthday in 2016. It's a order of. Oh, you're a new uh, order. I'm 1500 years, but not 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 trying well, to. I, and actually, Benedictines go farther back than that, don't? Oh, it is about fifteen hundred years. That's right. Mm-hmm. You're fine. Right? About twice as old is more mature than you guys. Wise and more spiritual too. Well, there you go. But we're even though we're distant cousins, we're still related. <laughs> All right. So tell us about tell us about the Dominican Order and your draw into your and well, how it, people can do that. Well, it, it, the Dominican Order is made up of people who are seeking the truth and who love to study and pray. And we follow a, a non-binding rule of, of praying and study, gathering once a, once a month to, to, to visit and to share in that study and share our prayers and how we can improve our lives towards Jesus Christ, get to know our faith better. But the focus of the Dominican Order is on truth. Um, that is really the biggest character bear over the last 800 years, is the focus of, on truth. When and, you hear that, and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, presently we're doing going through study of how truth impacts and affects uh, society as well as ourselves personally inside, as we talked about a while ago, but how it impacts the church and society at large and how it, it impacts everything that we do. It sets us free, ultimately. When you think about one of those rookie Dominicans, Thomas Aquinas? Yeah, one of those guys. You know, one of those guys. You know, his whole the, the approach to natural law— America is basically founded on the principles of natural law, but saying we don't like Catholics. You know, it's, you know basically it's like we want to do this, and we're kind of talking to using the words of natural law, but we don't like natural law. So there's kind of this sort of, uh, you know, confused sort of thing about that. What? What? Tell, tell me. Go ahead. You got it. Well, I'm I'm just itching because I I taught government at the local university for several years, and. I began more I studied in it, the more I understood how the American founding is. And you're absolutely right. They understood the natural law. But when you read the Federalist Papers, fascinating, they understood human nature. And they combined that with the natural law and human nature to understand how government should operate. And human nature was critical. Uh, both Madison and and uh, others discussed that in the, in the Federalist Papers. So you're right. It's so much a part of our founding. And a really good example of how truth impacts society and improves life for all of us, you know, which we're going through a time period of when now people are kind of fooling themselves and naming things that they aren't and identifying things they wish they were but aren't. What do you mean? Tell me what you mean by that. Well, it's just like, you know, the, the situation with, you know, if I declare myself a woman or I declare myself I'm a millionaire but I'm not or I, I'm 49 and not 60, or 50 instead of 12. I mean, this is the kind of foolishness that we're dealing with in modern society, where we fail to face the truth. And of course, when we don't deal with the truth, we can't handle any much else either. So, 
that's kind of what I mean by truth is so critical to a successful society, not only ourselves and for the church, but society at large. But isn't truth uh, being intolerant? Well, when you, say, when you say this is an absolute moral truth, isn't that uh, being intolerant? Well, nature itself is intolerant, and the, na- the natural law can be intolerant. Now, when I say that, it's like, you know, when you look at the phys- laws of physics, which is a, na- a part of nature, of the natural law, you either deal with it or don't, but otherwise you'll die. When it comes to the moral law... What do you law, mean by that? Give me, give me an example of that. Well, you know, well, it's like being out on Waikiki, you know, if I get on that surfboard and I fall in inappropriately into the water and hit my head on the bottom without protecting myself, it'll kill me. Uh, however, if I take the precautions, use good sense, and follow the laws of nature in developing my skills as a surfer, I'm going to do pretty good, but I can fail. And if I'm not dealing with the truth and those protections, then it can kill you. That's the nat- the, the, the physical laws of mm-hmm of this earth do impact us, you know. You know, when you jump out of an airplane at two two miles up, uh, you don't really feel the sense of falling. You feel a rush of wind. You don't feel a sense of falling. Wow. You know, but when, never, you, know. But you, do, you know, you don't see, you don't see the earth coming up more quickly to you. Every uh-huh. now and then you go, oh, it's getting closer. But you don't, as if you just look down, you don't see that feeling of it getting closer oh, until wow. you're maybe about a mile up and you open your canopy, you know, then you, then everything changes. But you know, just because you don't feel a sense of falling, gravity is working, and uh, okay. it's a natural law. It works 100 percent of the time. And people who, in our in our world today, like you're saying, people um, calling, uh, you know, I can be a man, I can be a woman, a man and man can be married to each other, same sex marriage, and all of these, uh, all these other. It's like I when I was a kid, there, I, I read the Bible when I was 19. They will call what is good bad and what is evil good. And I go, boy, I wonder what that's about. I don't understand it. It's glaringly obvious. Now, we're talking with John Keenan uh, and his son, Timothy. Uh, This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter. Because if you do, you get our newsletter on Saturday mornings, which means you get the radio show, actually the video YouTube version of the radio show, before it even airs on the network. So go to our website and and, uh, subscribe to our email. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We invite everybody to go to our website, to the Deep Adventure Store, where you can buy my book, uh, Amazon bestseller, Deep in the Wave, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, or you can buy my book, uh, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, or you can even buy our seven virtue cigar samplers. They're quality, beautiful cigars that are based on the seven virtues. Each each of the seven cigars in the, in the sampler set have their own unique blend, the four Cardinal virtues of justice, self-mastery, prudence, and uh, fortitude are more of the milder blends. And then the, the Caraggio, excuse me, faith, hope, and love are the um, more Maduro, darker blends. But by all means, uh, uh, buy this for your, for your father, for your, the, your husband. Uh, Father's Day will be coming up soon enough, and we'll ship those to you. But uh, we're, we're here on the Bear Wozniak Adventure, and uh, uh, our website is deepadventure.com. We're talking with John Keenan and Timothy Keenan, who are out here in Hawaii a few weeks ago, we got to go surfing. John, you know, we never even really talked story about how we know each other or, or what you're, what you, you know, you're, you're, a, you're an attorney and what you do. Let's kind of backtrack and get that in here before we go on. Well, I, I work for, I'm a deputy attorney general with the state of Idaho. I work and I'm signed in the insurance uh, department uh, and, and that's how I practice law and uh, have done so since for, for over a decade now and in the law and have uh, love the law, love the practice of the law and helping people, really critical to my life. And, um, you know, and part part of, you know, I was born and raised here in Boise, love this, my background. Do you guys is, have bluegrass there? We do. I thought it was only in Kentucky, but you do have bluegrass in Idaho. Truly really do at Boise State. It's only Boise in that State. one yeah, the, we, I graduated from there. I can testify. Did it have blue, blue turf when you were there? Yes. They no did. kidding. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Just wanted to get that clear. Uh, they, the, it's, it's just a, a really key part of the tradition here in Boise, Idaho, and as well as the skiing and the river floating and and adventures in the mountains. You know, backpacking, things like that. Beautiful. That's really, 
big part of, of Boise. I used to drive through a lot because I used to have a cabin up in Montana when I lived in Cali. I would drive through there. But tell awesome. me, tell me more about the Dominicans. If people want to, if people want to kind of get a little bit of traction, what would you, what book or what would you suggest to them well, if they're interested in that area? Very good. And and there's a lot of two or three things I'd tell them. Bear is first of all, check out just Google uh, lay Dominicans. Um, if you're here, if you were here in Idaho or in Hawaii, you can type in Idaho lay Dominicans and. And up will pop our website or the Western Dominican website, and there's many resources there, in fact, books and that type of thing. There's also a site that's called Signum Dei, which is not an Idaho uh, Dominican website, but it is a lay Dominican that starts it. And from Signum Dei, you can learn, it get, talks about Dominican spirituality and how it respects the truth and contemplation and that kind of thing. So those are some resources. There are a number of books out there. I First of all, as you know, Bear, read the Bible <laughs> and and the Catechism, which I so enjoy watching you uh, on, on, on your uh, Catechism review every morning, as you can look at Waikiki. And the, and the third thing is to, is to read. Um, now, there is Dominican spirituality books that you can find at, at a bookstore or online. They're really fascinating that give the base baseline. For us, I would refer people on the web to go to Signum Day for that story. And and what 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 is your basic prayer life, the pattern of your of your of your uh, prayer and, and study life? Well the the rule of Saint Dominic is uh, to now it's not binding under sin because life is life the way it is, but is to to do the liturgy of the hours or what we call the divine office twice a day and to be in constant prayer. What's taught me in the liturgy of the hours is even when I'm driving down the street or at my office, I pray uh, constantly uh, either a Hail Mary or some something from the liturgy of the hours of the Psalms. The next thing is the rosary. The rosary is very important. You know, it, it, it has its it's uh, it's power. It can convert. It can change. Those are the things that are core line. So reading the Bible, the Catechism on a regular basis, minimally a few minutes each day, one small section if you can, and prayer of the Rosary. The Rosary is a very powerful weapon to confirm your life, to convert your life, and to commit your life to Jesus Christ. You know, I've lo- I can't. I, I, it's been four days now. This is the fourth day now. I can't find my Rosary. Problem is, I take it places, and you know, maybe I was using it and set it down for a moment, but it oh, just—it feels so weird not to have my rosary. I'm like, I'm, I'm reach for it. It's like an automatic thing. It's like, um, uh, it's an automatic thing to reach for my rosary when I, uh, when it's time to intercede in prayer. I remember when I, when we were in Long Ride Home and we were cruising up into Louisiana, and the uh, Catholic cross bearers of Louisiana met us at the border as we were approaching. And it looked like a Mexican standoff, you know, like we were going to draw guns or something in the show. And I just go, looks like this is a standoff, man. Show us your weapons. And everybody there pulled out their rosary. They had it in their mi- motorcycle vests. And those, that's real men. I mean, it's not like pull a gun out of your vest pocket. Pull the rosary out. That's, it's, I don't, should call it an it, but I mean, the praying of the rosary is the most powerful intercessory experience of uh, m- m- results. Seeing the results of the prayers uh, of the rosary is amazing. The greatest war that a man can fight, and this is a weapon of that war, is to win the fight of self-control in Christ. In other words, your own self. Mm. All your own passions, your own inordinances, and your own desires and passions, mm-hmm. and all the appetites that affect us. To submit those to Christ, this is the most powerful weapon. And consistently reading the scriptures as well can orient you towards Christ in, a, in an well, that's incredible what, special that's way. That's what the rosary is. It's a meditation on scripture, right? But the thing exactly. about it is you think about um, uh, here's this big bad, this this guy thinks he's a big bad dude, Satan, right? And then you got this humble, humble maiden, a little maiden crushing him. You know, Aka, it, Aka, yeah. Aka exactly, the, the humility of Mary and her special relationship with Jesus, and 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 we we pray 
Uh, and Mary brings those prayers to her son and says, hey, they're thirsty, Lord. Give them some, give them some wine. If he, let, replenish the earth, re- restore people's souls. Well, it's, it's the reason why I'm Catholic. It's the reason why I'm Christian is that Mary has prayed for me and my family over and over again. And it's a very special relationship with everyone yeah, who asks. Timothy, do you pray the rosary with your dad? No, I don't think so. Well, he has, but oh yeah, he has, yeah, yeah, you do. And you have? Does he have his own rosary? He does. Yeah, it's it's so cool. Do you ever like to just hold it in your hand when? I mean, uh, I I love to just I love to reach in my pocket and know that it's there. And I, I mean, when I'm standing by the elevator, I got nothing better to do. I pray the ro- I pray the you know I begin to pray the rosary. I think for for me, it's it, it has been a consistent resource, even in terrible times or in stressful times and in good times, you know, it's a source. When we, when Cindy and I go for a walk, even on busy street of Kalakawa, I'm praying the first part of the Hail Mary and she prays the second part and we, we pray the rosary as we walk along. And then, you know, you see someone who's in pain or you see someone who looks disturbed or someone isn't happy and that rosary prayer goes right out to them as you're walking. Well, we have, the Dominicans have a prayer uh, chain and I get one of those a day that pray for this or pray for that and always say Hail Mary for those person or persons who's on that list. And it's a very powerful prayer. And you've got somewhere around, you know, eight or 900 people praying. It's uh, really amazing. Well, that's the beauty of the Liturgy of the Hours because you've got eight or nine, 80 or 90 million people <laughs> praying the same prayer on the, on the same day. You know, uh, I love the Liturgy of the Hours. My dad uh, sent me... To, the Liturgy of the Hours, before I had returned to the Catholic Church. And it's one of the reasons I returned was finding the early the writings of the early Church Fathers in the Office of Readings, you know. I know. I was telling the story the other day about when I was at confession over at a parish not far out of Boise. And I was, and for whatever reason, the priest had an old set of Liturgy of the Hours. I didn't have the funds to buy a full set. And he offered them to me. No. But I have no idea where it came from. And I knew at the end of the, at the end of the confession, he gave them to me. And and he was buying a new set, and I still don't know how he knew I was a Dominican. How it beautiful! Such, it was how really beautiful. Fun. Yeah, I love. I actually, I use the apps most of the time, but I love it when I put when I pull out one of the four volumes and, and pray. We're talking with uh, John Keenan and his son Timothy Keenan, who came out here to Hawaii, and uh, friends of Mark and uh, Barbara Buchanan. Uh, yeah. Another friend of mine, an attorney there in Boise, and they hooked us up. So you guys, if you ever out in Waikiki, you know. Um, you can follow me on Facebook under Bear Wozniak, or you can go to better yet, go to Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure on uh, on Facebook, and let us know you're coming, and we'll see what we can do to uh, hook up with you guys and say aloha. Uh, until next week, go to our website deepadventure.com and uh, uh, subscribe to our email list, everybody. Uh, John, Timothy, uh, aloha! Thanks for being on the show. Aloha, and and my best to you, Ohana. <laughs> best to you, Ohana. Okay, till next next week. Uh, May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.